Hi everyone and welcome to this video on medications that are used for dyslipidemia to specifically reduce the risk of cardiovascular disease through the production or the creation of atherosclerosis. So these So these medications are going to be four categories in total. They have the statins, the fibrates, the bile acid resin binders, and also azetamide. Now, it's important to note that when I explain these medications, it's going to be very brief in terms of the mechanism of action, so it's not going to be exhaustive, but I'm going to explain it in the concept of the normal physiology of lipoproteins and how fats and cholesterols are transported around the body. When I talk about this, I'm going to use the liver as the centerpiece and the center controller for cholesterol and lipid transport. But it's going to be broken into kind of two parts. What the liver can do on its own without coming from the outside world, such as diet, and we call this endogenous effects. And then we have the exogenous is what comes in from our diet and how it's processed through the body and then into the liver. So let's firstly go through on how we obtain fats through our diet. So coming across here to the gastrointestinal tract, we take in foods that have lipid components with it. It will get processed through the gastrointestinal tract and then it will get absorbed across the small intestines. The fats or the lipids associated with our diet are going to be things like cholesterol, um, triglycerides, so I'll call TAGs. So this is three fatty acids with a glycerol backbones. We have phospholipids. and also fat-soluble vitamins. So fat-soluble. Now these will be digested and broken down in different ways. We're not gonna go through that today, but essentially they'll get repackaged up into a large kind of package, which we call a colomicron, and they'll get transported across the membrane into a large droplet, which has phospholipids on the outside, including proteins lipoproteins and inside is a combination of triglycerides and cholesterol including the fat soluble vitamins so it's going to be not a very dense droplet of fat and it's going to be packaged on the outside by a phospholipid some proteins that help with um, tagging and the way it can be read but essentially this is known as a chylomicron Okay, so now what happens here, that gets transported not into the blood, but firstly it gets put into a lymphatic vessel, so a lacteal, which eventually gets into bigger, bigger lymph vessels and then eventually gets access into our um, subclavian vein and then goes into the blood. So the, sub, so the column micron will eventually make its way into the blood, where once it encounters encounter certain enzymes on the walls of endothelium called lipoprotein lipase, what happens is it will start extracting the triglycerides out of the colomicron and the triglycerides will get put into tissue. So I'll put tags get pull, pulled out. So tags, triglycerides get pulled out and they can be stored in adipose tissue for calorie storage or it can be used, the fatty acids can be used in muscles for energy. Now the colomicrons will start slowly shrink in size as we're pulling out the triglycerides, but eventually the colomicron will be um, returned back to the liver. The liver will make some modification, but fairly quickly it will then excrete another slight modification of that colomicron to something we call VLDL. So what's this standing for? Very low density lipoprotein. Very similar in in kind of composition as a colomicron, it's probably just slightly smaller. So the, the VLDLs then go into the blood, encounter again the lipoprotein lipase, that enzyme that pulls the triglycerides out of it. And this could be in a fasting state, whereas the colomicrons would be in a fed state after we've eaten. And so in a fasting state, the, the VLDLs can be useful for, again, muscles. So we can use fatty acids for muscles, for exercise and energy metabolism, but also the heart can also utilize fatty acids. So the VL VLDLs can be used throughout the body so it travels in the bloodstream and the triglycerides just get extracted through the use of that enzyme. The VLDLs start to shrink in size and they turn into intermediate lipoproteins which can return to the liver but in some cases will just turn into LDLs. So LDLs have a slightly different role. They're more about transporting or delivering cholesterol. So that's a different 
subset of lipids, cholesterol is different and it needs to go to different body parts for different functions. So it can go to the skin for the, to help produce vitamin D, it can go to the adrenal glands or the gonads to produce steroid hormones, or it can go to nerves or Schwann cells to help create myelin. So LDLs are important for certain functions. It's only when they start to become high or excessive that LDLs can also, because they're relatively small, they can go inside blood vessels and become atherogenic, which means they can start to form plaques within arteries, particularly arteries that have stress associated with high blood pressure, diabetes, smoking, or other things like that. So LDLs have the capacity to go into blood vessels. That's why these are generally considered not so good fats or lipids. So that's the role of the LDLs, delivering cholesterol. Now the, the liver will try to bring LDLs back to it so it can re capture some of that cholesterol. And so it will put receptors on the outside. So it will put receptors on the outside of the liver to try to bring LDLs back to it and then repackage into cholesterol. Another way that liver can reclaim some cholesterol because it's important that the cholesterol is always maintained in a certain quantity in the liver is through another lipoprotein which we call a HDL high density lipoproteins. So high density lipoproteins or HDLs go around the body and they almost reclaim the cholesterol in tissue and in other parts so they can go into blood vessels, they can go into other areas and kind of take cholesterol back and return it back to the liver. Finally, before we go into how some of the drugs work, the other function that cholesterol has in the liver is the liver packages it up into bile acids, which becomes very important for digestion because bile acids play a role in emulsification. So cholesterol is modified into bile acids, which is then stored in the gallbladder. And when we eat, particularly fatty foods, the food moves through it stimulates a hormone known as CCK, CCK cholecystokinin, stimulates the gallbladder to release bile. Bile goes into the small intestine to help break down the fatty components, which we saw here that travels in the cholomicron. But we need to reclaim that bile acid because it's got so much cholesterol and the cholesterol is important. So we actually have a mechanism to bring it back to the liver through the portal system, not the lac the lacteal system through the portal system and that re reclaims about 95% of the bile acid, therefore the cholesterol. So that's the general gist of how we either exogenously get cholesterol or we can create it in the liver. There is one other way that the liver can create um, cholesterol if it needs to, if, if levels start to drop and that is through snapping um, molecules known as acetylcholine, which is the, at the bottom of the uh, glycolysis. So acetyl-CoA, 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 three to four acetyl-CoA's make something called HMG-CoA. And there's an enzyme called HMG-CoA reductase, which makes it into mevalonic acid and then eventually cholesterol. And it's this enzyme that generates HMG-CoA into cholesterol, which the statins are going to be using, or blocking, should I say. So that becomes very important for the medications that we're going to go in through shortly, or at least the statins. So when we're in a situation where we have a condition known as dyslipidemia, where we have too much LDLs, because dys means disordered, lipid, these fats, emia in the blood. So when we have too much LDLs and low amounts of HDLs, so they're switched, one's gone down, one's gone up, this is termed dyslipidemia, and it increases the risk of LDLs going inside blood vessels, oxidizing, forming foam cells and fatty kind of plaques, fatty streaks, and then complicated and then increasing the risk of heart attack and stroke. So we don't want this to happen. So we need to potentially utilize medications that can play around with these levels. Also VLDLs are important in this as well. So the first group of medications, which are the statins, um, really work by this enzyme here. So we've got the HMG-CoA, but we've got an enzyme called HMG-CoA reductase, which, trend, which modifies it to mevalonic acid and then cholesterol, and this statin medication blocks that. Therefore, cholesterol levels will start dropping in the liver. This is the endogenous pathway. So the liver needs to reclaim cholesterol somehow. So what it will do is it will increase the amount of LDL receptors on its membrane that extracts more LDL LDLs out of the blood, 
to reclaim that cholesterol. So that drops the LDL levels. At the same time, the liver pumps out more HDLs to go around the, the body and reclaim cholesterol in tissue. So that can reduce the amount of um, LDLs or cholesterol in um, the endothelium or subendothelium, which is where the plaques start. So that's a beneficial thing, but also the HDL can return cholesterol back to it. So the HDL levels can um, change. So HDL goes up, LDLs go down, and that's why statins are a successful drug to reduce the dyslipidemia and the risk of atherosclerosis. So the medications here, the first ones, uh, the shorter acting ones, they're not used as frequently, such as simvastatin, but some of the later drugs such as atorvastatin and rosuvastatin, uh, they've got a longer half-life, so they last longer. So they're the medications that are used more frequently. Now, just considerations with statins, because we're blocking cholesterol being produced, there can be sound downstream effects, particularly one notable one is in the electron transport chain. So this is through the production of ATP. And this can be challenging in some tissue that has high energy metabolic states such as muscles. And so um, there is a side effect of myopathy or muscle pain associated with using statins. And that's through the coenzyme co um, coenzyme Q10, and that can be um, a reason for leading to myopathies. Uh, another thing, because we're, using, we're blocking an enzyme in the liver, there can be risk of hepatic injury. So usually a consideration he here is if there's muscle pain or potential liver injury, taking um, certain markers for muscle, such as creatine kinase or liver function tests can see if these medications are causing injury, but generally they are very well tolerated. The next class of medications are the fibrates. The fibrates work in two areas. One working in that lipase, so it increases the amount of triglycerides being extracted out of the lipoproteins into adipose and in, utilized in muscle. So that can change the profile within the, um, particularly the VLDLs, but also it has an effect in the amount of VLDLs that the liver excretes. So it decreases the VLDL percentage. So where we have dyslipidemia, specifically more with VLDLs, the fibrates such as phenofibrate can be useful. A side effect can be because they are usually used with statins in more severe types of dyslipidemia. You still have the effects of the myopathies. But one side effect is the way that cholesterol is processed with the bile acid and then saturated in the gallbladder. It can be over or super saturated in the gallbladder, which can increase crystal formation and therefore gallbladder uh, stones. And that is a side effect associated with fibrates. Move into the bile acid resin binders. These work by blocking the reuptake of the bile acids back into the portal system, back to the back into the liver. Therefore, we lose in more cholesterol in feces. So this will just result because the production of bile acid from cholesterol is such a kind of hungry process and that's why we want to reclaim most of it but if we're losing it in feces we're going to drop the cholesterol in the liver and as a result the liver will try to reclaim the cholesterol in other ways like we saw with the statins therefore that can also be uh, an important outcome with dyslipidemia. Finally in this drug the azetamibe this works interestingly at the transportation across the the cells of the small intestine, the way that these products can get into the colomicron, specifically this one is, there is a transporter that is for cholesterol. So this medication, azetamide, blocks the transporter for cholesterol only, not the other components. So these components don't or aren't affected in the colomicron, it's solely cholesterol. So therefore, the, the, the amount of cholesterol that can be absorbed here is less and that would be passing in stool. By both of these drugs, because we're affecting the way that fats are absorbed in the bowel, this can affect the, the motility, it can affect bloating, flatulence, either constipation or diarrhea because we are changing the, the environment in the gut. So those two medications can change or cause gastrointestinal upsets. Now again, because we're losing cholesterol, the liver will be trying to reclaim it in other places, such as increasing the amount of LDL receptors, so LDL levels will drop, as well as increase in HDL output to reclaim the cholesterol in the body, and that's where these medications can be also useful. So there we have it, that is the drugs that can be used for dyslipidemia or risk of atherosclerosis or risk of cardiovascular disease. Uh, what we've seen here is there's four in type, 
Statin's definitely been the mainstay, the most common, well tolerated, but do have side effects. You can see where it works in the liver and how it benefits the dyslipidemic state. And the other drugs, which are usually used in combination with a statin, but depending on the dyslipidemic state, whether it's solely LDL or a combination of LDL, VLDL, or the amount of HDL as well. So this obviously comes down to the decision of your clinician, but hopefully you now have a better understanding of the mechanism of these medications. Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe. We've got hundreds of others just like this. If you want to contact us, please do so on social media. We are on Instagram, Twitter, and TikTok at Dr. Mike Todorovic at D-R-M-I-K-E-T-O-D-O-R-O-V-I-C. Speak to you soon.